Hi and welcome. My name is Kelechi and I'm going to be your instructor in this short course to solve the Codility Developer Training Lesson 3 on, on Time Complexity. In this course, you will get a brief overview of my solution in solving the permutation missing number task in Lesson 3 using c -sharp programming language. This is the fifth tutorial in our Codility lesson series, so if you want to get an overview of what Codility has to offer, please watch our earlier video. c -sharp is a powerful and versatile language, so if you are looking to take a developer test for any remote job, solving the Codility lessons will be a great help. This lecture is not a beginner's course. Some experience using c -sharp is required, however, we will soon be releasing our full c -sharp course which will take you from beginner to expert levels. So once again, my name is Kelechi and I'm a software developer with over a decade of experience developing and teaching software development. Let me know in the comment section how this course has helped you or if you have any question and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because it helps us out a ton. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get right into it. So welcome back. By the end of this chapter, we would have successfully understood the requirements of the permutation missing number task and we would have created a solution for the same permutation missing number task. So let's head right into the Codility website and understand the requirements for this task. See you in the next section. Welcome back. In this section, we are going to understand the requirements for the permutation missing element task. And it reads, an array A consisting of n different integers is given. The array contains integers in the range of 1 to n plus 1, which means that exactly one element is missing. Your goal is to find that missing element. So write a function, which is a class called solution, and has a method also called solution, which takes in an array of integers as arguments and returns an integer that given an array A returns the value of the missing element. For example, we are given an array such that the, uh, uh, the value in the zero position is two, the value in the first position is three, value in the second position is one and value in the third position is five so this function should return four because this is the missing element we are to write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions n is an integer within the range of zero to hundred thousand the elements of a are all distinct and each element of of our a is an integer within the range of one to n plus one so in the next section, we are going to begin developing our solution to solve this task. See you then. So welcome back. First, let's create a console application and call it permutation missing numbers. When our application is created, we first need to create our solution class. So we paste in our solution class. And make sure that we properly refactor it so that the solution method doesn't return any error. So in our solution, the first thing we want to do is to order the values in the int array so that yes so we use order by to order them in an ascending order and we cast our results to a list Next, we are going to create a variable called results and initialize it to zero. So what we are going to do now 
is to first use a nested ternary operation operators we're going to use nested ternary operators and we're going to take care of some fringe cases so this code might seem intimidating at first but it's really simple to understand all we are doing is to take care of some cases that are fringe that are on the edges so that we catch every possible outcome in our code so we first check to see if there are no elements in the array and we do that by checking if the values dot count is zero if this is the case we return one as our missing element we then check the int array to see if it has exactly one element and if it has exactly one element we check if that single element is one if it is one we return two as our missing element and if the single element is two then we return one as our missing element and finally we check if the values in the int array are greater than one this is the final fringe case and if the el the first element is two then we return one as our missing element s else we'll just return zero as a missing element but this zero we are returning is just to tell us that okay the values in our array is greater than one So let's do a bit of refactoring to make sure we can see all our code. So next, if we have zero in the result, we know that we have more than one element in our int array. So we need to write more code to get our missing element. And we call an if statement and we check if result is equal to zero. We then use a for loop to go through each value in the array. We now use an if statement inside our for loop to test if the next value in the array is equal to the present value plus one. So if it is not equal, which is what we are testing in our if um, condition. So if it is not equal, then we have found our missing element and we equate it to our results variable, which we defined earlier. We then use the else statement to check if we are at the end of the array if we are then we return the next element after the end elements in the array Alright, so finally, let us modify the main class so that we can test our conditions. We define a new instance of the solution class. 
Then we define an array of integers with the test conditions from the Codility website. So our test conditions are 2, 3, 1, and 5. We then call the solution method and pass in the array. Now let us run our code and we can see that we got 4 which is the missing element from the array. So our code works. Let us go back to the Codility website and test our solution. We copy the code from our ID here. And we start the test in the Codility website. Make sure your default language is C sharp and you confirm. Next, we paste in our code into the sol solutions method in the IDE. Make sure to import every necessary statement. In this case, we need to import the using system.link namespace. And we run our code. Alright, so we passed our test conditions. Now let us submit our task to see how we performed. Great job! We came out with a 100% performance. So our code passed all conditions and we obtained a perfect score. You can go ahead, go ahead and test and see your correctness test and all performance tests and see how the code worked. So, let's get right into the next section. See you then. Wow, you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching to this point. Really hope that this course has helped you. The source codes for this task can be found in the description below. And if you're still having any challenge, please let us know in the comments below. Or if you feel you have a solution that's better than ours, we are more than welcome and willing to learn from you. Remember, we will soon be releasing our full c -sharp course from beginners to masteries in the coming weeks. And we have a ton of great materials and courses lined up to take you to the next level of your programming journey. So don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, take care.